Hello everybody, Emerald Wolf here, and I'll try to keep it short. But I'm going to explain to you what the Bloodshed Covenant is. So what is it? Well, it's a player-run gank hunting covenant created in Dark Souls 3 by Peeve. We invaded the area after Pontiff Sullivan. We were soul level 140 for the sake of keep bypassing the meta, so we didn't interfere with the meta. And that opened it up for gank hunting, plus it actually worked in hand in hand with the duelist because the lowest level you can invade at 140 is 126. And the meta for dueling was 125. And that way you're catching people just outside the meta. Most gankers, if they knew about 125, weren't going to stay at 125 because they knew it was a meta. So they'll catch you at like 130, 135, and later on in the game's life cycle, moving up towards 139, 140, and 150. So that's the idea behind being 140 because otherwise you would just invade to end his fight clubs. And that's not what we were looking to do, we were looking to fight the gankers. All you heard about when Dark Souls 3 released is how annoying it was to invade. Because in the area after Pontiff, and the area in Crucifixion Woods, you would only find 3v1s and 4v1s, and in some cases, 5v1s. But anyway, the idea is you invaded Pontiff at soul level 140 with the bleed or luck build, that way, whenever we were to force a team fight, the gankers would have to constantly deal with the bleed buildup. You'd see randoms invade who would just go and run into the 3v1. And that's what we have all been doing at this point, myself included, we would invade, and just the moment you invade, it's like, alright, where are the gankers? Let's go try to take them on one by one, let's get them down, let's kill them. But then you would just get melted by a whirlwind of Darwin, Spam, Dark Sword, and then afterwards you get frustrated because you get ganked. But it's because you're going to the fights alone. Which is fine, you know, it can be fun, it can be challenging. But a lot of people say it's only possible to do it with some kind of ridiculous OP build. That doesn't leave a lot of room for variety. So with this, yeah, you have to have a bleed focused build, but you could still use some of the fun weapons. Does any of this sound familiar? If you look on Reddit, or Discord, or in the forums, you'll likely see a lot of people complaining about ganks. Now why is this? Well, it is because the only way to get invaded is to summon another frilled finger, or to use the Tonker's Tongue. So as the invader, you will always be at a disadvantage. Because of this, a group of surviving Bloodshades in the Bloodshade Discord decided to revive us to combat this new wave of gankers. Of course, it should be noted that the team fights as of now are rare due to the fact you need to use the Tonker's Tongue to get a sect in invaders. And unless any DLC areas implement a covenant system like the Aldrich Faithful or the Watchdogs of Farron, it does seem unlikely that we will get much practice with team fights. Regardless, how do you become a Bloodshed in Elden Ring, you might ask? Well, it's quite simple. You choose what kind of build you want to run, and your choices are attacker, tank, or support. Now let me break these down for you. Let's start with the attacker class. You should start with putting Bloodshade in your name, and then you should find the weapons you want to use. But make sure to either infuse it with Bleed, or if it has an a Bleed, use a Cult. Some weapons I recommend are the Grave Scythe as a staple of your build, or Power Stance, Scavengers, Curve Swords, as they are also really good. If you pick these, I would use the Occult Infusion, and get to 80 Arcane if you can without sacrificing survivability. If you want to use more of a Dex, Arcane Hybrid, I would recommend Rivers of Blood or Bloody Helis and get 50 decks and 45 of cane. Again, as long as you're not sacrificing survivability. It is strongly recommended that you wear the Raging Wolf chest, so that way if you enter a team fight you can identify your teammate, although this isn't necessary. Here's my Bloodshed build for inspiration. I have just enough endurance to wear the armor I want, and I can still reach the optimal poise breakpoint, which in this case is 61. For the tank class, you'll start by putting Blood Clot in your name. You should find the weapons you want to use, but make sure to either infuse it with Bleed, or if it has an innate Bleed, use a Cult. Some weapons I recommend are the Grey Scythe as a staple of your build, as well as the Power Stance Chain Link Flail. If you pick these, I would use the Occult Infusion and get to 80 Arcane if you can without sacrificing survivability stats. If you wanted to use more of a Dex Arcane Hybrid, I would recommend the Eleanor's Pole Blade, or Morgoth's Cursed Sword and get 50 Dex and 45 Arcane. It is strongly recommended that you wear the veteran's chest, so that way if you are in a team fight, you can identify your teammate. 
although this isn't necessary. Here's my blood clot build for inspiration, and keep in mind I have not made it in game. And I have just enough endurance to wear the armor I want, and to reach the optimal poise breakpoint. For the support class, you will start by putting Blood Sage in your name. You should find the weapons you want to use, but make sure to either infuse it with bleed, or if it has any bleed, use a cult. Some weapons I recommend are the Grey Scythe as a staple of your build, as well as the Power Stance Reduvia. If you pick these, I would use the Occult Infusion, and get to 80 Arcane if you can without sacrificing survivability stats. If you wanted to use more of a Faith Arcane Hybrid, I would recommend Varus Bouquet, or Mogwin's Sacred Spear, and get 30 Mind, 30 Faith, and 40 Fire Arcane for the Auxiliary status. It is strongly recommended that you wear the Lord of Blood's Chest, so that way if you are in a team fight, you can easily identify with your teammate without having to lock on, although this isn't necessary. Here's a Blood Sage build for inspiration. Now that I've shown you how to make your build, here is some gameplay showing the strength of bleed build and invasions, and if you want to know the lore, that will be at the end of the video.
founded by Peeve, the first invader. The Bloodshade swore with the blood of the wolf to destroy the gankers and acquire the true knowledge of Lothric swordsmanship. But alas, they failed. Peeve was traveling through the land, fighting off any gankers he met. However, it was a battle he could not win alone. When sparring with the Abyss Watchers, he made a pact with the wolf's blood. Peeve was given hunters born from the blood of the wolf. His hunters were known as the Bloodshades. The Bloodshades were born to the pack. In poetic justice, the Bloodshades were born wearing the armor that both ended and started their very existence. It was a constant reminder of their purpose, and the purpose of their predecessor. Over time, it became apparent that the blood of the wolf was more than a tangible thing. It lived on in any who would gain together to prey on the gankers, just as the Abyss Watchers sought to destroy the Abyss. The bloodshades were created to stop the spread of the gankers, and so the powerful ganker Ouroboro challenged Peeve along with his loyal bloodshades. Thus the crusaders were born. The crusaders used their faith in Oro to grant them strength. During the war, Peeve recruited a group of heretical deacons that used blood magic. They became the blood sages. And during the end of the war, a way into the fabled ringed city was found. And when Peeve went there, he found the Heralds were willing to fight against Oro, thus creating the Blood Clots. The war raged for years until an unknown foe raised its head and struck down the Bloodshades. This foe was a reincarnation of Ratcord, and it struck with a vengeance, dealing deep blows and beheading the leaders of the Bloodshades, for they were known to hold the blessed duelists throughout Lothric. The Bloodshades expected rapture when the pact finally fell. They expected release, finally breaking that which bound them to this world. But ultimately, no such respite was found. With the death of their leaders, they disbanded and went to their own ways, cursed by the blood of the wolf to remain immortal. When the Ashen One killed the Abyss Watchers, they stole the blood of the wolf and the remaining bloodshades became mortal, with even the greatest among them fading into nothingness. Now only a few scholars have heard the legend of these warriors. When the Elden Ring shattered and the Tarnished rose from death, there was one bloodshade among them. Vargrim, the Raging Wolf, one of the first Tarnished to visit the Round Table Hold. His armor was a modification of the traditional bloodshade armor, as he felt the oath sworn to the Abyss Watchers was a reason for their downfall. The rune of death stolen, immortality is once again possible for the old Bloodshade. And so he set off to rebuild the Bloodshades to combat the new rise of gankers appearing in the lands between. His first apprentices were Bloodshade Pythoneer and Bloodshade Centene, who carried on his legacy and reformed the Bloodshades. Bloodshade Pythoneer modeled his and his students' armor off of his mentor's armor, while the blood armor Bloodshades and blood clots used were vastly different than in the Age of Lothric. This is because while Bloodshade Centene was researching blood incantations, he encountered Mog, Lord of Blood. Mog, impressed with Centene's arcane knowledge, made a pact with him, giving him his sorcery as well as giving him and his students the Lord of Blood robes which was loosely based off of his own robe. As for the blood clots, there was no person that could recall who they were or what armor they used besides the veteran general Nal, who was the commander of the banished knights at Castle Sol. Nal had a small excerpt about the blood clots from a long forgotten text, and upon learning of the return of the other bloodshades, he set out to revive the blood clots and become their leader. The blood clots he trained used his armor, and most were his own banished knights who were ready to follow General Nall to the ends of the land between.